I'm your host, Wendy Lowe. Today on my show, we have a power couple who are the founders of the Kaika Maoloa Youth Foundation. Together, Kaleo and Misty Padilla mentor the youth of the Big Island. The title of our talk today is Kaika Maoloa Forever Strong. Today, I would like to introduce to you what a difference this young couple has made as they mentor our youth of Hawaii. Welcome, Kaleo and Misty. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, right. <laughs> Aloha. So let's get started. I know that you have a beautiful blended family, Kaleo. Let's start and by sharing with a little bit about your family. Well, my family, we, we I was I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. Grew up in Waimanalo, Hawaii. With, you know, my mom, my dad, and three sisters. And as we got older after high school, my mom and dad transitioned to Kona and I was actually going to school in Arizona and my sisters, they all came, followed my mom and dad. And after I was done school and I came back, actually I went back to Oahu, lived with my grandma, grandmother for a few years, then decided to come to Kona. Wow. So when you got to Kona, um, I know that you, I, I know you started a family. So did you share a little bit about your, your, your family? So my family, like, I didn't start my family to like later in later in life, you know, in my thirties, yeah. you know. But when I got to Kona, my 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 thing was was I didn't know what I was gonna do here and stuff, and then that's how I ended up going to the boxing gym, and you know, I just stumbled it, stumbled upon it by chance, you know, just like walk because I was down the beach throwing net, catching mm -hmm. fish, and then when I was I had to use the bathroom, so I walked to the the bathroom at Ford Airport, and that's when I ran into the Kylo Kona Boxing Club. And wow, the humble that's... beginnings, huh? Walking yeah. into your career, you didn't even know it. Yeah. Wow. So I know that you had a great career in boxing. Please share with us a little bit about your boxing career. <clears throat> yeah, when my boxing went, like I said, you know, I, I walked into the gym and, you know, met the coaches, and that that's when basically my career started from boxing, you know. Coaches started training me, and then, you know, I just started competing, competing, and I just got good at it. And then next thing I, I didn't know, I was in the Golden Gloves and wow. the state, yeah, the state championships. And I won it in, I won the Golden Gloves in 2000, Hawaii State Golden Gloves. And then I won the state championships in 2001 and went to the Nationals from there. And you know, after that, then I got into the, the mixed martial arts training with MMA and started doing that. With Sonny Westbrook, Coach Sonny Westbrook, mm -hmm. and I just kept doing it, doing it as a you know, just fighting, 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 and not realizing you know what the the end goal and result was gonna be. But I just did it because I liked it, and wow, I, pretty, I just got pretty good at it. So, so, so the lesson there is, Misty. Every time he wants to go to the bathroom, you better be careful. You gonna come out with his <laughs> career. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Misty, I know you had a beautiful uh, career also before you got into what we're going to talk about. Uh, I have a photo of you, a beautiful hula dancer. Tell us about Misty and what that, that was all about for you. Thank you. So, yes, I was born and raised here in Kailua Kona. And, of course, everyone knows my mom is a, you know, beautiful, famous hula dancer, Antika Ulu. And so, you know, that just pretty much was instilled in me from a very, very young age. Um, never, ever imagining that dancing would be a career in my life. Um, definitely blessed and super grateful for the opportunities that was able to take me, you know, worldwide to travel. And you really don't see it as a job if it's something that you enjoy doing and getting paid for it. You know, it's been a passion of mine forever. And so I've, I'm just really grateful for that. And with that, it's just opened many, many doors. and the opportunities never seem to um, amaze us. Wow. And I know that you met, you both met, and I don't know the, the duration of the courtship or what transpired, but I know I have a photo of a very big celebration for you both. And um, just share with us a little bit about that. And then maybe you can just point out that there's a famous dude in the background there with you all. <laughs> so yes, uh, Chloe and I have been together for a little over a decade now. And we chose to get married on Halloween. Um, prior to all of this, we've always done events together. And so we're pretty much known in the community for all the community events we've done. But Halloween has been our jam. 
um, from a Halloween block party that I used to put on before in the community. And then Khalil just thrives on our community haunted house. So that's been ongoing for many years. And we figure, you know what? We might as well get married on Halloween because that's pretty much been our family thing. Uh -huh. So we did. Um, here I was trying to plan a wedding in Kona, figuring it's going to be here in Kona. And Kalo had it all planned out already. He said, no, we're going to do it in Vegas. Dog the bounty hunter is going to marry us. And oh. that's what we did. And it was amazing. <laughs> wow. What a, what a story. And so how is it that you were able to get Dog the bounty hunter to um, preside over your wedding, your marriage? How did you get him, honey? Well, actually, I work for a dog. I'm his personal security, him and his wife. I'm one of their personal bodyguards. And so, the, so I work with them on the TV show, too. Like, mm -hmm. I started working with them on Dog the Bounty Hunter season eight. And I worked for two seasons on, or three seasons, right? Dog and Bet on the Hunt. And then we had our last season on, um, it was called Dogs Most Wanted. So I've been on auto, auto shows with them. So. Me and Dog was really close. Wow. So, no wonder you look so famous. I knew I knew you from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and how blessed that he was able to reside, uh, preside over your wedding. Um, yeah. As you serve him, now he's serving you. And you guys are just, uh, all of you are match made together right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. You're super yeah. great. Yeah. And so now I know there's a photo. And this is a beautiful photo because it's the blessed Ohana. And I know that this right here is a full-time job. So people are wondering, why is it a full-time job? Well, these are all their kids. So please share with us a little bit about your family. I go first? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so our family, we say, is a big blended family of 10 children. So I'll go ahead and start with my first three. I was from a previous marriage, and my oldest is now 22. And then I have a 19-year-old. And then a 17 year old. And that's Mahie, Ola, and Makana. And then I was blessed to be able to have three more boys with Khalil. And that was one baby Samson. And then Kanan is our eight year old. And Ethan is our five year old. Wow. Yeah. Khalil? Blended with his blessings. Yes. <laughs> yeah, mine had my oldest daughter, Angel. And then I had my son, Noah. And then my other son, Seth. So. Mm -hmm. And we just blend it all together. And then oh. we have Lacey. Oh, and Lacey. Too. In yeah. California. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so like I said, we have 10 kids. We're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you declared it. As long as you think we're done. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I know um, you mentioned, and uh, this story is pretty much um, uh, segueing into baby Samson or baby. Do we call him baby Samson or Kaika Maoloa? What, how Everyone's we... known him as Baby Samson. Um, okay. Our boys all have names from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, everyone knows him as Baby Samson. Um, and Ikai Kamaloa was his Hawaiian name that was given to him by Uncle Danny Akaka. And it means forever strong. Wow, that's beautiful. So please explain to our audience, why is Baby Samson so special? So Baby Samson, he was our firstborn son. And he passed within 24 hours due to undetected pneumonia. Um, very, very unfortunate circumstance. But through the power of prayer and the love of God, you know, I do believe with all my heart that by this act that occurred, um, you know, a huge blessing came out of it. And that was birthed the Ikaikama Law Youth Foundation. Um, it was my desire in my heart to start a youth foundation that just really help educate on health and wellness awareness. Um, little did we know, I believe that this was also the pathway to allow Khalil to use all of his God-given talents to something that he's clearly, um, I don't want to say ignored, but something that he just never received to take on the responsibility of what he was called to do, which is teaching you know, health and wellness awareness through boxing, which is his talent. Um, so many people, even prior to me, you know, have always reached out to him that, you know, you've got to do this, but he's always brushed it away. No, no, no. He never, ever wanted to do this. But through this, you know, um, the sacrifice that we had to give up of 
you know, not having Samson in our life. With that, I believe came multiple blessings, um, physically, spiritually, um, every area you could possibly think of, um, professionally with us as well. Um, we were just able to experience so many blessings because of that. Um, through this heart wrenching moment, um, we've embraced the blessings that came out of it. Wow. And, you know, through Khalil, through your obedience, you know, a lot of people are called to ministry and to teaching by saying, I'll do whatever it takes, Lord. And then they go and they, the, 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 the administrator says, okay, first you go and scrub the toilets and that's where you want to start. But in your case, God just called you directly to the restroom. And as you pass, that's where he has your, has, you see your vision that he laid out for you. And so it's amazing that you were able to, that you had eyes to see what God had in store for you. And yes, Misty, um, by opening this gym, it allowed Kaleo to really max out who he was created to be. And he didn't, may, he may not have known it then, but through his um, joy of boxing and all the, the values that he got out of boxing, he was now able to take it and utilize it to help others who are in need. And so, yes, this gym is a birth, a place of many opportunities and there's going to be a lot more. And uh, I'm just, I can't wait to hear more of the stories down the line and in your future. So opening a gym in Samson's honor naturally was uh, uh, the best and the next step for you all. So just please share with us more about the purpose of this gym. So with the gym, um, Ikai Kamalo Youth Foundation, we're able to obtain our 501c3 nonprofit status. And with that, we wanted to have a place where the youth can come and just be empowered, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, just be empowered, um, but also incorporating the health and wellness aspect to all of this, um, because we did lose a son due to undetected pneumonia. And we've lost many, many family members, all related to health and wellness. And, you know, we figure, you know what, we need to start these kids from when they're very young, just with being able to encourage um, and empower them and educate them. And we figure we might as well utilize, you know, the God-given talent that Kaleo has with boxing because he has such a huge following. Um, this was just another door that opened for us um, and we just took advantage of it. Wow. I um, applaud you both because your purpose that you're fulfilling is so great and the need is so there. Our children, our keiki of Papa'i are um, not being as blessed from this blessed land as we would want it to be, as we want them to be. Because you think Hawaii is a land of paradise. Everyone should be healthy with the great air, the great ocean. We can surf, we can run in, in the sunshine filled lands and, and the aina is just in our system, in our souls. But it's not so. Our children are not so healthy as one would think mm -hmm. when first thinking about Hawaii. And so, yes, you have a big role, a big responsibility ahead of you as you take on this, this, this role to create health awareness mentally. So it's mental health, spiritual health, nutritional health, emotional health. And I believe, I truly believe that when I walked into your gym yesterday, I felt that it can be done. And so... I was just grateful that I was able to have that opportunity to walk in and feel the, the mana that I felt when I was there. And so I, I thank you for allowing me and opening the doors to me and to many more that are yet to come. So, you know, when you walk into a gym, you normally see, you know, especially a boxing gym, you normally see a ringside, uh, you know, where they go in the ring and they, they box and they practice and they spar. But, but you first think of that when you focus on a gym, but not in yours. Your focus when I walked into that gym was not just the ring. It was more than that. Can you tell me and share with me what your focus is when other members come walking into your gym? You know, with this, um, a lot, as I mentioned to you earlier, is this has all been a big spiritual journey for us. So people that walk through the doors, um, we've noticed a lot of them are broken, you know, and they see our place as a place of refuge where many of them, they have a hard time leaving and it, they just come, you know, like the floodgates have opened and we're just so grateful. But at the same time, it is overwhelming because we're like, oh my gosh, what do we do now? You know, but with the faith that we have, like, we just have to trust in God that he's going to equip us for everything that comes our way. 
But that's really what's happening here is, you know, people have broken the loss. Um, they just come through. They want to learn. They want to talk. They just want to be heard. At the same time, you know, they're learning. They're learning the art of boxing, um, jiu-jitsu. And then even with that, we've had others that want to come and teach here as well. Um, we're also incorporating hula for health. Um, we've incorporated some step classes because people just want to dance and move. Mm -hmm. And we just get so many requests. We wish we could accommodate them all. Um, we're really still trying to pray to see what, what the, what, what's God's plan right now is we've just, this was just beyond us, far beyond us. <laughs> Oh, well, just stay in your obedience as you both have done and listen. Be still and listen to all the prompts that he gives you and you won't go wrong. As long as your doors are open and your arms are outstretched, you know, the need um, is there for just a hug. Even though they said we cannot hug, we <laughs> Okay. And you all know that because I know that you guys never stop. And um, just be mindful of everything around us. Um, I know that your doors have opened about three months ago. And um, just in the perfect time when people are still wondering, should, can I come out? What, what's out there? Um, what, is that a safe place to be? And as I said, when I walked into your gym, I felt that it was a very, very safe place. So please tell me um, who can come to your doors to be a part of this ohana that you are creating. So for me, when this started, my main focus was for the kids. You know, that's that's all I really cared about is as long as the kids, they own place for train, you know, my mentality was, you know, I grew up with the Kona Boxing Club and like a lot of kids couldn't afford, you know, to pay membership and stuff. But so with the county, they gave us that place for free, you know, but like now we're in this place. So obviously we have, you know, bills and rent to pay. But so my my thing is like, I'm not trying to make money on off of none of the kids, you know. My mentality was no no child left behind, you know what I mean? They can't pay the feed and they just still let them come in, you know. That's that's how I see it as. Right. So what you're I mean, saying course, is money should not be a factor on giving them yeah. what they so rightly deserve as keiki to grow up in a healthful yeah. environment. And what you're doing is even further bent than the ohana is you're the extended and you're able to mentor them through the nutritional training that you're offering. I mean, I love the step class, the hula, the hula classes. And that's exactly, that's the best exercise ever for both men and women to, you know, to just be utilizing their body in any which way they can. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that they have to be so physical with boxing, um, but I could certainly- Just movement. Yes, movement. And that's so basically what we need is just movement. And then <clears> that no one cares and that we all care and we all love each other around us. And that right there is so healing, Kaleo. And so what you both have, are, both have and are creating, it's just, it's just immeasurable. And I'm just applauding you all the time for what you're Thank doing you. here. Yeah. <laughs> so Kaleo, there's a, there, our next slide. Um, I'm asking you to talk about it because there are men and, and I think they're a product of what you created there. So what's happening in this slide? Oh, well, right there we have our head coach, Sonny Westbrook from the Kona Boxing Club. And then we have the two brothers and sisters, Ariana and Gio Ramos. Um, uh, uh, Gio, he was the 2017 national champion. First, first kid ever from Kona to ever win a national championship in boxing. Wow. And sister was ranked number two in the nation. Woo-hoo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a hole, on a hole. <laughs> yeah, 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 we've been training, training, Training with them, they've been training with us since they were six, seven years old and stuff. Wow. So, Can you, yeah. and you know what? This is just the beginning for, for this amazing gym. You're going to change so many lives positively, great, creating greater futures for all. And that's so, so very important. You both. I'm so proud of you. So, <laughs> so tell me, um, tell me about some events or competitions that you prepare for besides you know, just title holders and championships. What's this photo all about? Well, this is actually when I first started in Kona. This was our, uh, when I walked to the gym, this was probably like a couple weeks after that. But that was the coaches at the time. That's coach on the, on the, the right-hand side behind, that's coach Tim Panavarov. And then on the left is coach Peter Ibanez. So they was like a, my first mentors here in Kona. And then, you know, they kind of stepped away. And that's when Sonny Westbrook got involved and he took over the gym. But 
This was back in 1995, I believe. And that's when I started here, yeah. Wow. And so that was your first experience with your career that's leading you to open all these doors for so many people. Who would imagine, right, Khalil? Oh, yeah. Not me. (laughs) Every right. Years, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? He had the plan. He just needed to show you the right door to open to go right. within and, and find it. So how blessed you both are. I'm I'm just amazed. <laughs> Such obedience. So together we can by so together we can by putting our best foot forward. I love this. By putting your best foot forward. That's so important. You know, and it may not be the wrong foot, it just needs to be the best foot. So what are the goals? For the next half of this year for your gym? Oh, we have a lot. Um, so putting our best foot forward, we definitely want to grow our membership and our staffing. You know, that's always the ultimate goal. Um, we can always have large numbers, but at the same time, if we're not fulfilling our main purpose of instilling and empowering and educating, you know, numbers won't seem to matter. So with the numbers that come with the goal, you know, we want to be able to provide quality, quality education, um, quality performancing, of course, the competitiveness of Kaleo, you know, he wants to race champion. So that's definitely the goal is, you know, to be able to build the youth from ground up and just being able to empower them and, you know, make them feel like they are the champion of the world, be able to walk away, you know, knowing in their heart that they fulfilled their purpose and their goal physically. Um, But as well, you know, we want to Make sure that the emotional side, the um, spiritual side, everything all aligns in one. So do you just wait for that child, um, that person to walk into your doors or do you go and outreach in any way or do you take referrals? How would, you know, how do you get them to, to work with you? Right now, um, you know, because Khalil had such a huge following already from his career, We have not had to go out and advertise and like solicit. It really just happened, fortunately. So we've just been all word of mouth right now. And it's just been so amazing. It's been amazing, overwhelming, but all in a good way. Um, But we are, we're on media, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we have our website, and we can only continue to grow from here. Wow. So get used to that, Kaleo. And Misty, and don't be don't be overwhelmed or don't call it overwhelmed because God will only give you what you know He knows. Yeah, you. we embrace it, <laughs> embrace yeah. it all the way. Um, I think I heard you say something about you have a upcoming fundraiser on Father's Day. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe if I'm in town, I can come back and yes, enjoy what you have do. to offer. So share with us, please. Yes. So how that stemmed up was we had a grand opening a few months ago and it was very successful. So the owners of Halipu'i Plaza, you know, would like to continue seeing events such as that, providing that we can work within COVID regulations. So we decided to put on a Father's Day fundraising event and we have two beneficiaries for that event, um, two very prominent fathers that are very well known in the community through sports as well. They're battling cancer. So we do want to utilize this opportunity as a fundraiser to help the families. And we're going to have vendors, entertainment. It's going to be on Father's Day here at Halipu'i Plaza. And of course, we have to have boxing excitement. So we're going to be including that as well in our Father's Day event here. Oh, that sounds exciting, right? And then other people who are looking for the bathroom, Kaleo? They're going to wander into your reach and you know what, just bring them in, embrace them and give them a hug and say, hey, como mai? And welcome to our club and just embrace them. And that's right. how you'll continue to reach out and grow. So I'm so excited for that too. I want to hear the results of that. So I would just want to ask you both, you know, your, uh, for you, Cleo, your career, do you have one most um, memorable or outstanding moment that you want to share with us in regards to your career in boxing? You know what honestly, <laughs> like it was all such a blur, you know, because I used to fight so much. And the, the only thing that that is really like stands out to me now is like right now what happened with the whole how we established this gym and you know with the whole COVID, you know, all the kids who started to come to train at my house and that's what is standing out to me was because I never wanted to do this. Hell no, I didn't. Not one bit want to train kids and everything 
how the whole thing played out. It just all fell into place. And then now it's like, oh, that's all I want to do is train the kids. It's like great. Yeah. Now, you know? Wow. And it didn't take you very long to get to this point, you know. Um, <laughs> he got zapped. Neat, yeah, the neat <laughs> thing is, God, he opens the door and he knows what he wants you to do for him. And then it's like with, with resistance, we say, no, 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 no. So the more you say, no, 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 the more he says, yes, yes, yes. And then what happens is you're doing it. So, you know what, just continuing to continue to say, yes, 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 Lord, I'm here to serve and I'm going to do whatever it takes that you need me to do. And that's your purpose. And that's the blessing that you both have is that you're fulfilling purpose. And money can't buy that, you know. So don't ever let that that part take you down where it's like, oh, my Lord, what are we going to do now? No, don't ask him. He knows. Okay. Right. And you should know too because you have trust in him. That's all. Right. So now I know we had a, a, some information about your contact. Share with us, please. How can we get in touch with you? So you can go ahead and tune in to ikaikamaloa.com. That's on the web. We also have Facebook and Instagram right now. But yeah, ikaikamaloa.com. We are definitely enhancing it as well. So bear with us. But in the meantime, that's your go-to. Oh, and um, is there a Facebook page that you have? Yes, it's also Ikaikamaloa Youth Foundation. And is it you that is managing it? Or do you have someone who walked into your door <laughs> who's very techy that may need uh, out to do that for you? And, and then you need to find that heart? And give them we're purpose. putting it out there right now it is just me but i am praying and believing that someone will be able to come and take it all and i will be able to release that wholeheartedly <laughs> <laughs> well just pray because you know that young man that young woman is sitting there saying oh i wish i wish i could do more for this club i, I want to do more so we we it. It. <laughs> lord use me so you need to find that heart and then you need to share with them that you need them and I tell yeah. you, that door will be open like how Kaleo's door was open to this amazing career, this amazing gym, and finding purpose in both your lives. So I Thank wish you. you continued success. This is only just the beginning. And I know that, and you know that too, because you're being obedient. And that to me, and of course, you're putting your best foot forward. And that's how he wants to be. Right? So we've come to the end of our show. You've been watching take, Taking Your Health Back with Think Tech Hawaii. So I want to say mahalo to Kaleo and Misty Padilla of Ikaika Mauloa Youth Foundation as they change the lives of many Kiki Hawaii. So thank you for participating. And thank you to our viewers for watching. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll be back in two more weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo to the Padillas. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo.